Okay, let's go ahead and evaluate this expression for these values for the variables. So you can see this expression contains some x and y's and some numbers, and we also have some absolute value stuff going on here. And what we want to do is replace uh, these variables for these particular values and simplify. So this is something that uh, all of you out there that are taking any sort of algebra course need to master. So if you know how to do this, that's excellent. This is a pretty uh, easy problem. Just pause the video, uh, take a quick moment, and put your answers into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to go over this step by step in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I could definitely help you out if you are struggling with middle school, high school, or college level mathematics. I have a way, uh, my style of math, let's just say, is really trying to break things down in ultra, super simple, clear, and understandable ways so anyone and everyone can learn mathematics. So again, if you want to check out my uh, math program, just follow the link in the description of this video. Now, if you happen to be uh, preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Acuplacer, or CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. I can help you prepare and uh, pass those exams if you homeschool. I was just recently voted uh, number one for middle and high school mathematics. At least my courses were in homeschooling by a major homeschool publication. So you definitely want to check out my homeschool math courses. And if you need some math notes, um, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But one of the secrets to doing well in mathematics is taking excellent math notes. Okay, so let's get into this problem. Now, this is a pretty basic um, algebra problem. And typically, uh, the word you're going to see is evaluate. And you're evaluating what? Well, we'll describe this here. Um, you could describe it as one or two ways. You could say this is an algebraic expression or a variable expression. So it's not an equation. It's just an expression. We're just expressing something that involves variables. And these particular variables here, x and y, we can replace these uh, with particular values. We can assign numeric values to these variables and then plug in uh, those numeric values uh, into where the variables are at and then simplify. That's what it means to evaluate. Okay, so you're going to see this question pretty uh, uh, frequently in uh, any sort of algebra course. Again, starting with pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one. It doesn't make a difference. So if you uh, ever wondered what this word means, evaluate, this is what this means. Okay, so let's take a look at what we need to do here. So we have 4xy minus x over uh, negative of an absolute value of y. So for this x here, I need to re replace that with negative 1. This y here, I need to replace that with negative 2. So this x will be replaced with negative 1. And then this y here will be re uh, replaced with negative 2. And then we want to simplify. So if you weren't sure what to do, that is what uh, you want to do. But I'm interested uh, in knowing how many of you out there are going to make a mistake. Okay, now that you know what to do, you know, this doesn't seem that complicated in terms of the, the level of math we need to do uh, do here. Uh, if you, you know, For those of you who just didn't know, let's talk about 4xy. This means 4 times x times y. That's what that means in algebra. And then the absolute value, if you don't know what that is, well, I'll explain this in a second, but this is something you definitely need to know about as well. But uh, again, let's see how many of you are going to make an error. I bet you um, a good majority, well, I don't want to say the majority, but uh, maybe... 50% of you could make an error if you don't do this right, and that's what I want to show you right now. Okay, anytime you evaluate in algebra, you see that, or you have to, or you see that word evaluate, or you have to replace variables with a numeric value, I'm going to strongly encourage that you always, always replace these values with parentheses. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So 4x is what? So let's just start replacing this x. We have to replace this x with negative 1. So as I replace this x, notice I'm putting in this negative 1 in parentheses, okay? So always uh, use parentheses when you are plugging in or replacing a variable for a value. This will help uh, reduce errors, okay? Now, if you don't do that, here's what this is going to look like. 4xy would be like 4, some of you might just put like negative 1 times negative 2, 
You see, this is how that might look, 4xy without parentheses. This can cause a lot of confusion and will definitely cause you to make mistakes. So again, use parentheses. So let's go ahead and um, use parentheses to plug everything in. So we have 4x, again, x is negative 1, times y, y is negative 2. So I'm plugging in that negative 2 with parentheses, minus, there's my minus sign, x again is negative 1. I'm plugging it in with a negative 1 over negative of an absolute value of y, and y is negative 2. So I'm plugging in uh, that negative 2 there where that y is at. Now the first thing that you want to do when you're evaluating is, one, use parentheses, okay, as I've just been uh, stating here. Now the second thing, when you plugged in with parentheses, before you do anything, okay, you want to review. You want to double, triple check before you do anything, uh, before you start doing any math. Okay, so the, what I'm going to do is I plugged everything in. I'm going to go back and just make sure I plug in everything right because oftentimes you will um, plugged in, you know, an X for a Y or a Y for an X or you made a little uh, mistake. So at this point, if you made an error, you know, correct that error from this point. Don't start doing this work where you incorrectly plug something in and then you'll get the wrong answer. You might realize it later and then you'll have to go all the way back up here to uh, start uh, this problem over again. So you're going to be like, okay, X is negative 1. All right, negative 1. Y, negative 2. That's good. Minus uh, X, again, negative 1. You're just double checking negative Y against negative 2. And once you're satisfied, you're like, okay, nope, I did this right. I plugged everything in correctly with parentheses. I'm good to go. Then the third thing, Again, you're going to uh, you're going to go ahead and start simplifying. Okay, so let's go ahead and start that now. All right, so at this point, you want to just uh, simplify, you know, steps at a time. Do not try to do all of this in one step. So we could just start up here in the numerator. So four times negative one times negative two, negative times negative is going to be a positive. So negative one times negative two, positive two. So two times four is eight. Okay. At this point, right here, this is going to be interesting. If you didn't plug in uh, this value of negative 1, this x right here for negative 1 without parentheses, this could cause a lot of confusion. So we have a negative of a negative 1, okay? So what, or the opposite of a negative 1, so that's positive 1, okay? But we're clearly seeing what's going on here. I have a negative of negative 1. I'm just doing this, you know, in very focused little steps. So I'm pretty uh, happy with this being 8 and this being positive 1. So I have 8 plus 1. Of course, that's 9, but we'll get to that in a second. And then down here in the denominator, there's nothing uh, to do inside these parentheses. It's just a negative 2. So I'm going to have to figure out what the absolute value of negative 2 is and then find the opposite of it. Okay. So this is just one step uh, or a couple steps we can take, and then we'll continue uh, to clean this up. And let's go ahead and start it again with the numerator. So I have 8 plus 1, of course, that is 9. And the absolute value of negative 2. So let's do this over here. Okay. So the absolute value means the distance a number is from 0. But effectively, a lot of you out there will just say, well, the absolute value of a negative number is positive, And the absolute value of a positive number is positive. So here, the absolute value of negative 2 is going to be positive 2. But we want uh, the opposite of this answer. Okay, so again, uh, the absolute value negative 2 is a positive 2, but we have that negative sign in front of it. So we have negative 2. So this is our answer right here. Okay, uh, a negative 9 uh, halves. Now, if you take a look at this, some of you might think that we have this negative sign in, de in the denominator. Is this the same as this, negative 9 halves? And is it the same as a negative 9 over 2? two. Okay. Well, these are all equivalent expressions. So if you have this negative down there, it doesn't mean, um, uh, you know, nine over negative two, effectively just the whole value of this fraction is negative. So you really can just write your final answer like this. But if you wrote it like this or like this, of course, you wouldn't have that negative up in, uh, the numerator in this particular problem, but that's what it means that this whole value here, we have a positive divided by a negative, so the, uh, the sign of this fraction is going to be negative, so negative 9 halves. Okay, so how many out there got this right? Well, if you got this right, let me go ahead and give you a good old 1982 Mohawk haircut. Now, I don't even think you, that would classify as a Mohawk. Um, it took... Uh, uh, 
Um, young people back in those days, I guess even some older people, but I was young, in 1982, a lot of work and a lot of hairspray to get the hair looking pretty cool. So anyways, just like uh, that haircut or that hairstyle, that's pretty cool that you got this right. So I'll give you a, uh, an A plus and 100% uh, for your mathematics uh, today. Okay, so nice job. Very, very good. But here's the deal, right? Uh, if you didn't get this and you learned something, then it's excellent as well. But even if you got this right, you don't want to get overconfident, okay? Uh, and again, there's a big difference between you watching me do math and you doing math on on your own. Remember, math is a skill. It's no different than you shooting basketballs. Let's say you want to get good at shooting basketballs. How do you get good at shooting basketballs? Would you watch someone uh, shooting basketball is really good. And you're like, whoa, the more I watch this person, the better I'm going to get. No, nope. the only way you're going to get better is you yourself have to do the practice. So math is no difference. It is a skill. So even though you, you know, like made one basket, you're like, hey, I made a basket. I must be great at shooting, you know, um, basketballs. No, you know, you want to continue to practice and challenge yourself. So mathematics, again, follow through if you're looking to be excellent in this subject. And hopefully you are. But if this little video helps you out, please consider helping me out by smashing that like button and maybe even subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos based from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all the content that I post and have posted. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.